Hello everyone, I am about to introduce to you New York Times best-selling author Karen White and I am so excited. Excited and nervous at the same time because this woman has written a lot of books and you know what's interesting is I saw on um, I think it was Facebook that uh, she was signing 800 books 800 books she had already this book is coming out this week and she's already been signing books she's out there um, her newest book is called dreams of falling so good okay there are no words and there's a really good reason why she has sold as many books as she has so everyone I am so excited to introduce to you Karen White <laughs> Hi everyone, I am so excited because I am speaking with New York Times best-selling author Karen White and we're going to be talking about her newest book, Dreams of Falling, and I love this cover so much and I didn't get to see it until I saw it on social media and because the copy I have doesn't have it on the Kindle and I just love that cover. Oh, it's gorgeous. It looks like they did like a pearl, pearl, I don't know, can't see it. Look at the pearlized, pearlized oh inside. Goodness. Isn't that pretty? And you ah. know what I just noticed is the ribbon because I didn't see that on my when I was looking at the pictures. I, I love that. That's a big part of the book too, that ribbon. That is so awesome. I love this book so much, Karen. Oh yeah, and I love don't you love the well, if you go on Instagram, people make art out of your books. I know. I know. I, I can't take any credit because I don't design the covers. They they will ask for my input. Um, but they, they I actually happened to be in the New York offices when the art director had like four or five different possibilities. And the minute I saw this and I'm like, that's it. That's, and that's it. it. And we made a few tweaks, you know, like the color, I guess the color of the dress and uh, the color of the lipstick is very important. If you see it's yes. like that bright red. Yeah, right. Because in the book, it, yeah. Mm -hmm, I didn't because know, that's an yeah. important part of the book and uh, the color of the dress, all of that. So they're just minor tweaks, but other than that, this is pretty much it. And the blue is just so, it's so it's perfect. Off, right? It's really going to, yeah, and look, at, they just did a beautiful job with the oh. spine and everything. Yeah. And, yeah, sorry. You have, you have to see the pretty, you know. See, oh, we so, love yeah. For those of you who the think that the touches. paper cover is the thing to be saved, it's not. That's supposed to protect the cloth cover. I love it when people come to me in beach towns with like sun sunscreen fingerprints on the linen cover of the book. I'm like, no, no, that's what the book jacket's for. And they're like, no, no, I'm trying to protect the book jacket. I'm like, okay, <laughs> whatever. It is beautiful. <laughs> so I don't blame them. But <laughs> Well, this is, is this your 24th book? Okay, I think it's my 25th. I, you know, I'm okay. sorry. I have to keep looking. The, re the reason why it gets confusing is that, like, I've done an, an, an anthology, which I don't count because I only did one little story. Um, and also, my first four books have all been rewritten and reprinted. I don't really count them either. Okay. Like, I only count each one one time. So, let's go with 25th. Um, and that's like a good solid number and it could be 24, it could be 26. It just kind of depends. So. I know. And I hate when I go to look and, you know, some of the things say different things. It's like, you know, some I, people say, and when they introduce you and then I'm like counting, but I'm like, wait, okay. I, when you have no, this many books. I have to count too. Well, I mean, you had six children. So, I mean, do you have to like count sometimes on your fingers with their names? Now look, see in the beginning, I guess I could take my Oh, there friend. you go. I can count them all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because um, the anthology is not mentioned, which, because I don't count it anyway. And um, yeah. And I just need to add one to that. So later I will count. So I'll have an accurate number for the next time somebody <laughs> asks me. But it's around 24, 25. <laughs> which is still a lot of books. But this story was so good. Like I told you about before, I mean, I was so excited that I'd get to talk with you. And then I started reading this book and I loved every word of this book it was so amazing and you don't need me to tell you this because you have lots of people to tell you this but you know it's coming out so everybody's gonna 
you know, I, everybody's like hyping it up and I've seen it everywhere. And I just want to tell yeah. everybody like, it is that good. The hype is worth it. It's that Yay. good. Yay. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. And no, I never get tired of hearing it. And, and it's really funny because, um, there's some books that beat me up more than others while I'm writing them. Um, and I, you know, I, we were having a major renovation done at my house while I was writing this book. So I would literally lock myself, you know, in a corner of the house and I'd listen to all the, the song, the hammering, the whatever. Um, and, but the story was just so difficult because there's so much, you know, emotions in it. And it really, I mean, I would come away from a day of writing just feeling like I had been run over by a steamroller day after day after day. It was so hard to write. And I find that, you know, um, and that it's not always the case. Some, some books that are a little easier than others, you know, people still love it does well. Um, but this book just remind me of my, another book, flight pattern, same thing, steamrollered and people love that book. But again, it's a very emotional read and I think that's why it killed me to write it. It is. And I love on your website, I found, and I'm going to use this term because I found it and I love it. And some, I don't know, somewhere it said grit, grit, grit lit. lit. Mm -hmm. I am now using, because I have playlists for different kinds of books so people can go on and pick up. Right. Uh, instead of mm -hmm. saying like, you know, Southern fiction, right? I'm using grit lit. I think that's perfect. And you know, so grit is traditionally a Southern food, right. but also, I don't know if you've seen the shirts that G R I T girls raised in the South, which spells me. Yeah, see, so that's <laughs> so like a double entendre, or however you say it. But um, but yeah, and you know, and, and it's, I was a marketing major in college, and I, I really hate to pigeonhole anything because I think my books are, are a little bit of everything. There's a little bit of history, you know, oh, women's man. fiction, Southern yes. family, um, old houses. If you love old houses, um, there's always a little bit of everything. So I hate to pigeonhole, but, but you know, in this world, you know, people need to know where it fits, you know, like where it fits on a bookshelf or where it fits when you're, you know, recommending a book. Um, so I guess grit lit is probably, you know, it's not chick lit. It's not a beach read. It's kind of, <laughs> you know, it's something in between. And I think grit lit is probably the best uh, category for it for now. I Although it's so. just for Southerners. I think, you know, I have a lot of Northern readers too, because it's got all those other elements. I'm yeah, you're Pennsylvania. I'm Pennsylvania. But you know what? My son um, and his wife, the one who's going to be watching this, my oldest son, lived in Charleston. Oh, um, lucky them. And she is Southern. She is from George Savannah. And okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she grew up in both places. And right. his oldest daughter, well, he has two daughters, and they started to get the Southern accent. And it was so cute, but they just moved to Arizona. His job took them to Arizona. I'm like, are they going to lose their accents? I hope not. <laughs> Especially the Savannah accent, it's so beautiful. Oh, I love listening to my daughter-in-law talk. So hopefully, because she'll continue to talk that way, they'll just pick it up, and, you know, because it's so cute. But I looked on the map this morning because I really wanted to see the coastline of South Carolina. Because mm -hmm. this is set in Georgetown, and I'd never heard of it. And I right. looked, and I was like, I hadn't realized, like, how many little inlets and, and you know, it's yeah. north of Charleston. Right. So a little and bit, south but, of Myrtle Beach. It's yeah. kind of right in the middle there. Yeah. Right. But it's still um, hurricane territory, you know. It is, big of course, thing. of course. Yeah, the whole eastern seaboard, really, in Florida. Right. Um, Gulf Coast, you know. Um, yeah, and I picked Georgetown because I, um, obviously, I do a lot of traveling because um, I write so much about the South Carolina Lake Country mm -hmm. and um, and a lot in Charleston. And then I always do this. There's um, Pauly's Island is one of those lovely little coastal areas um, in South Carolina, and there's a wonderful bookstore, Litchfield Books, um, where I always do this lovely um, um, author's luncheon um, for every book. So I have to drive between Charleston and Polly's Island, and I always go through Georgetown. You know, or I see it off the interstate, Georgetown, Georgetown, you know, and, and um, I, I'd never been there before. And I was traveling, um, again, between two, uh, two events, and I saw a sign that said, um, you know, annual shag festival. And I was like... That sounds cool. So I took a detour and I drove through this beautiful old southern town and just fell in love. I mean, it's such a great little town. Like, I could have come back someday and write a book set here. And so I did. Yeah, and this story, you know, for women, it's like so many interpersonal relationships. I mean, we all love the mother, daughter, but this goes 
further than mother daughter because it's like all these different mothers and daughters and you know I just I love that and I I so Ivy is like the mom she's like she has her own voice and I my mom died in 2011 okay and before she she died of cancer but before she died um there were moments that she was at completely like out right so when I'm reading Ivy her character I was like I'm just crying I'm like, oh my God, this is so right. emotional. So when you say this was emotional writing, like I can only imagine, you know. Right. Because I mean, you don't know. Um, I don't know. Would I be giving anything away if I if I? I know. That's why I'm like I'm letting that to you. Oh, <laughs> she is one I, of the main characters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she, her her point of view is um, first person. First person. Um, and it's present. You know, first person present. So she is telling the story as it happens. And there's a reason for that. And, um, I think Larkin is also for, isn't it funny how I can't remember, but <laughs> she is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then, um, um, but then, uh, uh, Cece. Third person. yes. Um, and the reason why I do that is, well, that's how the voices come to me when I tell the story. And so Ivy, of course, mm-hmm. who is Larkin's mother, it's very important that we hear her voice in first person present. And when you read the book, you understand. And Larkin, because I think she's really the main character, we had to hear from her in first person. And then Cece, she's a little bit more, she's still a huge part of the story, but she's a little bit more removed. And we hear her point of view from the 50s and modern day. So that's why we put her in third person. Um, yeah, for, so for everybody listening to this, I mean, it sounds complicated, but it really like makes sense as you're reading it. it. And I think it you helps know. you um, um, really latch on to the, to the character who's speaking. So yes. there's no confusion. It, it flows the way it should. Right. And you start the book off with Ivy. So that's why I was like, okay, I can talk about her because the first chapter is Ivy. So. Yeah. And, and the first, and can I read the first sentence? Because yes. I kind of do um, yes. a little. I was going to read it, but go ahead. You read it. It's my way okay. <laughs> Gotta turn the page. Oh my gosh. Okay. I think I am dead. That's the first line. Right. And um, so that kind of gives you a hint. But um, we see Ivy throughout the whole book. And she's actually inspired her whole character. And um, her uh, conclusion is based on a true story. So just remember that. Mm. So, yeah. And I love the name Larkin. First of all, that's another thing. Because, like, my daughter-in-law is Southern, right? So yeah. when she was thinking of names for my granddaughters, you know, she'd come up with it. I'm like... I never heard of that name. Why didn't I? But there are southern names. I've yeah, I have found. That's where I got Larkin from. I have a little book. Yes, yeah, southern southern baby name. Do you really? Because <laughs> they are yeah. a little different than us northern, like very conservative right. naming people. Like, you right. know, it's totally different. A lot of you know uh, southerners love to use. Um, uh, last names to show who your family is. And so that's why you have a lot of these names that sound like last names used as first names. And, um, and I love that tradition. And then to write a Southern story, you really need to do that. Um, like in my own family, because my dad's family has been in this country since the mid 1700s. And there's some really interesting ones in there. But, uh, one of the names that I absolutely adored is Walker. And, um, it's my, my grandfather's name. It's my brother's middle name. And I so wanted to use that for one of my children's names, but, um, you know, I figured that belonged to my brothers. I have three of them, you know, for them. And only one of them had a son. Mm. <laughs> I didn't use it. I didn't use it. I know. Don't you love, when, you know, when you look back to how you were naming your children and you're like, I don't even know why I was thinking that. But I do, like, my oldest granddaughter is Ella Reagan, right? And I was Ooh, like, yeah, okay. Reagan. And okay. But, you know, like. Is it hyphenated? Like, so you use both names? No. No, she's just... My mother came, American. there were five girls in her family, she was Catherine Ann, you always call Catherine Ann, Mary Louise, oh. Janie Elizabeth, there was Charlene, no, she was just Charlene, <laughs> <laughs> and, Glo- and Gloria, Gloria, so, um, you know, just five, uh, five girl names, but most of them are hyphenated, which well, I... Well, they do, do, I mean, she does say it, especially, like, my second one's Kylie Lynn, and they mm-hmm. say Kylie Lynn, mm-hmm. you know? mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's Kylie mm-hmm. Lynn, instead of, mm-hmm. like, we would just say Kylie. Right. You know, but, but that's how you northernize it. That's how yeah. you northernize it. But that's why I was like, when I heard when, you know, her name Larkin, I was like, I have to ask her because that is definitely sounds like Southern name to me, you know? Right. So, and it takes me a long time to come up with the character names. Like I go through my list, you know, from the book or from just ones that I jotted down. Um, a, a book 
that uh, came out last year, um, the night the lights went out, there's a main character. Um, well, she's the best friend of one of the main characters. And I got her name from a book signing for another book. Um, I was in South Carolina, and this um, older woman came up to me, and I always, you know, what's your name? How do you spell it so I can uh, autograph it? She says, Willa Fay. I'm like, oh, dear God, I have the name for that best friend now. <laughs> She's in the book. I mean, that is such an awesome name. You know, yes. how could I not? And the book is set in Georgia, rural Georgia, so Willa Fay just fit. So, um, so yeah, be careful if you come to one of my signings. You know, <laughs> your name it's great it. name. You might see it in another book. <laughs> well, and, and Sissy is Cecily. But then the yeah. way you spelled it, I was like, that's really cool. I love yeah. that. You know? So I yeah. never saw that I, before. I knew in high school, her name was Cecily, and we called her Cece. And I just always loved, 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 loved that. So um, my daughter, named, my husband named both of my children. So by naming all my characters, that's my chance to name them what I <laughs> That's right. They're like your little babies, you know. Exactly. Well, how did you come up with the story? I mean, the story is, and we don't have to. I, we don't give any spoilers. I want everybody, but the yeah, main very concept, careful here. Right. Um, well, one of the things was that um, so my mother graduated from high school in 1952, and my mother's from the Mississippi Delta, and like I said, she's the oldest of five girls, and um, and my they recently. I got, well, my mother has Alzheimer's, and so when my dad downsized, you know, he got rid of pretty much everything, and I ended up with all the photographs, and here are all these gorgeous photos of my mother and all of her sisters in these, like, beauty queen, you know, the crinolines and the stays and the hats and the gloves, and there's a picture of my mom and her sisters and my grandmother um, seeing my grandfather off um, in World War II, he's about, he's in the Navy, and they're dressed to the nines, gloves, heels, everything, and um, there's pictures of my mother's 16th birthday party, you know, where there was like a, a band and dancing, and she has this amazing dress on, and it's like, Oh my gosh, I just love this era. It was, you know, it was between the 40s and the 60s. You know, the 40s were like austerity. It was wartime, you know, and then the 60s were like craziness. So the 50s were just kind of an idyllic time. And, you know, of course, there was still social unrest and everything, but not to the extent of the 60s. People were, you know, becoming more affluent. The guys were coming home from war. And so the 50s were just that kind of like, neat time period and um I just thought oh my gosh I've got I I've got to use this time period um and so I did and that's that's basically one of the and plus I had Georgetown in there and you know I love history so I had to find something modern and and I'm obsessed with the idea I, this is also a book about friendships the lifelong friendships and what that means and I have um so I married my husband, my best friend in high school's older brother. She's still my best friend. And, you know, and to see how we change and grow and, you know, as our kids get older, it's just, I love that aspect about our friendship. Someone you knew when you were 16. Right. And, you know, many, many years later. Um, and I'm just, I love that. And I, and also I was very close to my maternal grandmother and, um, you know, and I just love seeing those relationships, those uh, generational relationships. And, um, you know, it's, when you're a little girl, you look at your grandparents and you think, oh, you know, they were so straight late, you know, they never had sex. They never, you know, it was just, it was a totally, you know, and then as you get older, you're like, well, of course they had lives just like we did. They just wore different clothing and there were certain different social mores. And I just love exploring that, you know, by putting the two generations together on the same page. Yeah. I love that. And, and then comes to my favorite line and this has no giveaway, but Mabry says to Larkin, cause they're best friends, learning who you are and changing aren't always the same thing. You know, sometimes we think we've changed, but all we've done is grow into the person we were always meant to be. Yeah. And when I read that, I was like, I have to write that down. I love good quotes. You don't understand that. that when you're in your 20s, I don't think, or even 30s. I think you have to be older to really appreciate yes. that, you know. Um, and I think, you know, as I get older, you know, not that I'm older than 39 or anything, but. Um, <laughs> We're actually um, the same age, so. Yeah, okay, cool. So, um, but it's so interesting because, um, you know, everybody gripes about getting older, and it's like, man, I. I'm so happy that I have had all these years behind me because I'm just so much wiser, not necessarily smarter, but definitely wiser. And just, I understand when it's important to get upset and when 
you know, it doesn't matter. And when I was in my twenties, I just could never have understood any of that, you know, and, and that's why I like looking at these two best friends, you know, they haven't seen each other in 10 years. Um, and their lives are very different from what they thought they would be. And, um, yet the other friend is just like, look, you know what, <laughs> you know, you need to sit back and sort of analyze a few things here. You know, you're, you're not as horrible as you think you are. <laughs> I, I just thought that was such a great line. And I also have to tell you, your last line is one of the best last lines ever. Thank and you know what, you. everybody don't even skip ahead cause you won't even get yeah. it. You won't even think that unless you read it. So don't even I'll get upset with you and I'll come hunt you down. <laughs> <laughs> I the last page. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I love a good like I haven't read a good last line like that in a really long time. So I was like, I have to tell her because it was just so well, perfect. Thank you. And and sometimes a first line comes to me before I've even started mm -hmm. writing a book, and sometimes the last line comes to me. Mm -hmm. And this this it didn't come to me at the very beginning of the book, but when I was halfway, I'm like, it came to me, and I wrote it down, and it's pretty much the way that, that I originally wrote it down halfway through, um, and it's kind of interesting because I don't outline or plot my books. I just start with my main characters, what their internal and external conflicts are, and then everybody else kind of jumps on the page and tells me the story as I go along. So, uh, you know, to come up with an, a, a last line before I finish writing the book is kind of surprising, but, but I knew that's what this was all about. You know, that's what this book, that's what this story was about, and, um, and so I just write it down and so I'm glad you appreciated it yay I really, did. I really did so before we go um now this book is coming out okay so this is a big yes. book you've got a lot of things to do but what about the next one like do you already have it like what stage is it in when you're doing this because you've done a lot of books so <laughs> I do have another book coming out September 4th and that's a collaboration called The Glass Ocean with uh, Lauren Willig and Beatrice Williams very excited about that I know, I know. So, um, we we already wrote a collaboration. The three, Forgotten there's Room. There's three of you. Yes. I have never heard of that. That is awesome. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I just got my ARCs for that. <gasps> I did. Look at that. So, talking about generational, um, two of the characters are, are, are um, on the Lusitania, 1915, and one is modern day. And of course, there's a mystery across history and awesome um but then my next book so i'll have another for those of you who've read my trad street series mm -hmm. uh trad street number six will be out in fall of 2019 and then after that kind of a sequel to my very popular um falling home and after the rain so mm -hmm. but it'll be really cool that's all i'm gonna tell you <laughs> Oh, that is so exciting. I'm like, I'm excited and it's not till September. I'm like already getting excited. Yes. <laughs> See, that's how crazy we are. Monday, uh, excuse me, Tuesday, June 5th. That's right. This book, that, right. Yeah, this book here, this which, book. oh my gosh, that's like a week and a half, or excuse me, tomorrow, tomorrow right? Or pretending, right. yes. Tomorrow, tomorrow, June 5th, Tuesday. I, um, I, I can't believe it. Seriously, I saw this book floating around. Like, it's amazing with these pre, you know, everybody gets the, you can pre-order now. And so, yes. like, just like that book, like, we get to know about them so far. Like, you yes. know, that is not real life. Like, when we were teenagers, we just went to the bookstore, whatever was there. It was on the shelf. I know. It's like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And if you had a good rapport with your bookseller, you know, they would say, oh, I know you love Victoria Holt or whatever, you know, and they right. call you. You know, on a landline because that's all we had back then. That's right. <laughs> and now, crush, yeah, they have it for you behind the, the shelf, and it was awesome. Um, but now we, we do get to know about, it, which is kind of good for us authors, so people can sort of plan their reading time. And we um, do, and we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just yeah. want to tell you, show everybody that beautiful cover again, and all the links. Um, this is coming out tomorrow, and so you can go on Amazon, you can hit that pre-order, and then you will have it. Because Amazon is like miraculous, and they're like you can. Or like, if you would like an autograph copy. Yeah. I just signed eight hundred of these at uh, the Books a Million uh, warehouse. If you go to booksamillion.com, you can get you can order a signed copy, and I'll pay extra for the <laughs> for the signature. Um, wow. And also, if if you're in, um, uh, if you go to my website, karen-white.com, there's a whole list of mine because I'm going on book tour. I will be gone for like three weeks, so hopefully I will be coming to your neck of the woods. I am going up north. Uh, this year, um, Delaware and New Jersey. Um, yeah, yeah. So those in Pennsylvania, you know, yes. come up to see me if you want to go to the coast. Um, but it's all there on my website. Um, so come see me. I love meeting readers. Um, 
and it's always a fun time. I, I, I'm told that I'm funny when I talk, so. You are, and you know what? That is so much fun because, like I said, you get to celebrate this book right now, and that's yeah. the fun yeah. part about it, you know? is right. to like yeah. have those other things in the future but like this week you get to celebrate so yeah. i'm so excited thank you so much this has been thank such you. a thrill for me to know you karen really i mean you made my whole it was really fun <laughs> yeah okay. so good luck with everything this week and and have fun and like i said all of her everything will be listed below all of her sites and everything so um okay. and maybe we'll get to talk again you know who knows yeah. To it. Okay. Have a wonderful rest of your week. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you everyone for watching. That was incredible. I was looking forward to that all weekend. Thank you. As I said, all of Karen's links are going to be listed below and um, the book comes out tomorrow. You can pre-order it on Amazon. Thank you, Karen.